handoff to John oh. Taylor. Hughes hole. He's at the 30. He's going to go. 10, 5, touchdown. Jonathan Taylor made a man miss the line of scrimmage and then runs it into Pater. And a one-handed INT. Are you kidding me? Kenny Moore. What a play by Naheem Hines. Horseshoe is back, baby. The horseshoe is back. What is going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of the Bring the Juice Colts podcast. Well, we are starting our first look into potential free agents that the Colts could look to add to their roster this upcoming free agency that's happening obviously in March so a couple months away here and we're going to spread these videos out throughout the course of these next couple months but I thought that we would start here by talking about a name that's been thrown around in the trade potential scenario for the Colts and get this video out first because honestly who knows when this trade could go down whether it is with the Colts or with another team and so my friend Andrew Thomason on here again. Andrew, you friend of the show, man. You've been on here so many times. How are you feeling, man, now that free agency is getting closer and that all these trade rumors involving potentially the Indianapolis Colts having us a little bit of things to talk about, right? Oh, for sure. You see me smiling. That's It's one of my favorite times of the year, aside from the season itself, playoffs and then free agency, because you know, you're really, like you said, you get to dig deep into the potential uh, players that are possibly going to hit the market. And then you hear a bunch of rumors about players that may be interested in coming to Indianapolis. And you feel like this roster is really a quarterback away. And you start hearing all these things with maybe Matthew Stafford and others. And I know we're going to get into that here in just a second. And it's, it's exciting. It's exciting to see what the Colts are going to do uh, this offseason for sure. Yeah, you already mentioned the name. The first guy we're going to look at is Matthew Stafford, the former Detroit Lions quarterback. He made it pretty clear, I believe it was last week at this point, that he wants out of Detroit, right? And Detroit is wanting to move on from him as well. So it's a mutual parting between both guys. And uh, the Colts have been brought up a lot in potential trade rumors for the veteran quarterback. So how I want to start these videos and do these videos is first off kind of talk about each player a little bit, talk about, you know, some of their physical abilities their physical stature, all that stuff. Talk about some of their stats from the 2020 season and in their career, and then dive into some questions as well. And we'll get into those. And we'll start with Matthew Stafford's a little bit about his physical ability, 6'3", 220 pounds. He's currently 32 years old at the time I'm recording this podcast. He'll turn 33 before free agency happens in a couple of days here. Honestly, he's turning 33. So you know, he's a little bit up there in age for a quarterback. I mean, he's not a Philip Rivers type guy, right? He's not like a 38, 39 year old quarterback. You think, you know, if you did get a Matthew Stafford, you'd have at least a good five years with him of elite quarterback play left. Is there any concern for you about the potential age of Matthew Stafford if you made a trade for him? No, not at all. 32, 33 is well within a quarterback's prime, uh, in my opinion. And like you said, I agree. I think if the Colts were to trade for Matt Stafford, they'd get at least anywhere from five. I maybe say I even venture to say six, seven years out of him. My only small concern would be, and I'll touch on this more here in a bit, is is injuries. And it's not that he's injury prone, but these last few seasons he's had some some issues. I think he had a, a back injury last season that kept him out a couple games, and then before I think it was maybe a hand or a thumb injury. But that that would really be my only concern, and even that isn't really uh, too much of a concern. But as far as his age is concerned, no, thirty two, okay. thirty three is like I said, right within a quarterback's prime. Yeah, and I guess we could just talk about some of the concerns as well. You mentioned potential injury. I kind of looked this up, though. It's an interesting stat for sure. I'm going to pull it up here. because So there was concerns you mentioned about his durability. Well, looking at Matthew Stafford in the past nine seasons, so from the 2011 season to this past 2020 season, the guy has played in all 16 games, eight out of the nine seasons. So even if he is dealing with some minor injuries, most likely he's going to play through them, and he has played through them. And I think that also should give you a little bit of sense of like, okay, like this guy is a tough, tough guy. He could get injured. He'll still play. He's, he's a warrior type of quarterback. So I think the injury concerns, they are valid because he is getting up there in age. And we know, you know, as you get older, your body takes a lot longer to heal from certain injuries. I mean, we saw, we've seen that. Like we even saw that with Adam Vinatieri a couple of years ago, right? It took him forever to get over that groin injury. It took him basically an entire year, it felt like, to get back from that. So 
I totally understand that. I'm really not concerned because this guy is a gridiron warrior. Like he's just a guy that's going to come in and he's going to perform whether he's hundred percent or not hundred percent. And that, in my opinion, that's the type of leader you want a guy like that, that sets that tone for the locker room. But let's talk about some stats for Matthew Stafford for, for a second here. So in 2020, he played in all 16 games. We'll start there. Uh, 4,084 yards, which is good for 12th in the league. He 64.2 completion percentage. So pretty good completion percentage as well. 26 touchdowns was the 12th in the league, tied for 12th in the league, and threw only 10 interceptions, which is about 18th in the league. So just about league average there, a little bit better, and a 96.3 quarterback rating. So looking at that from a stat standpoint, what was your overall impression of Matthew Stafford's 2020 season with the Detroit Lions? You know, and it took me kind of a while to admit to this. And my brother's a very, very big Lions fan. So he and I have had plenty of conversations these last couple of weeks regarding Stafford and, and potential trade uh, to the Colts. But as far as his stats are concerned, given what he had around him, played exceptionally well. Kenny Galladay was his primary target the season before. And I think he had led the league in receiving yards or receiving touchdowns. I can't remember. Either way, he was he was well on his way to becoming a, a future star in the NFL. And then uh, in the 2020 season, he sort of had a few injuries that um, kept him out a couple of games and, and Stafford still found a way to perform uh, and perform well to players that maybe aren't well known to a lot of people around the league. And so I think given, like I said, the, the kind of talent that he had around him, not that it's bad necessarily, but it's not Kenny Galladay, TJ Hawkinson, a really quality tight end stepped up. Um, he had an, a, an average running game. The offensive line was kind of average. I, I think he played fairly, fairly well. Yeah, I mean, this is what you see with elite quarterbacks, right? It doesn't matter who you really put around them. They're going to elevate the play of their other guys. They're, they're going to get it done one way or another. And that's what I like about Matthew Stafford. You know, he's, he's had some really quality receivers. He's had some really, really elite talent at wide receiver. I mean, Calvin Johnson immediately comes to mind, right? A guy that was arguably, if he kept playing, could have been the greatest receiver of all time. And then, you know, has Kenny Galladay. Kenny Galladay, we know how good he is has had a guy like TJ Hawkinson, has had Marvin Jones, has had Golden Tate at certain points. So he's had some decent receivers for sure. But, you know, you're right. Like, he's never really had a running game, never really had a great offensive line. But Matthew Stafford, year after year, continues to put up 4,000-yard seasons and borderline top 10 quarterback numbers in terms of, you know, passing yards and such that stuff like that. Obviously, it hasn't always been pretty for Matthew Stafford in terms of stats every single year. And you can point, obviously, to what we just mentioned with the lack of help around him. But... I think you're right. I, I like what Matthew Stafford has done well, his season with the Lions. While the record wasn't necessarily the best record, I think, you know, looking at Matthew Stafford individually as a player, I thought he had a pretty solid season after missing so many games in that 2019 season due to that back injury, like you mentioned. Let's look at some career stats for Matthew Stafford. So overall, he's thrown for 45,109 yards, 62.6 completion percentage, 282 touchdowns, 144 interceptions, just a shade under a 90 rating, 89.9 rating for his career. Give me your thoughts on Matthew Stafford's career with the Lions. Obviously, it hasn't been, you know, necessarily a great in terms of record wise. It hasn't been a great tenure with Detroit. It's been to the playoffs a couple of times, never won a playoff game with them. But just from a stat standpoint here, give me your thoughts on Stafford's career with Detroit and his career just overall as a player. Well, I think I kind of go back to the argument I, the argument I made earlier, excuse me, with that being the kind of players that he's had around him. I mean, you mentioned it. Calvin Johnson, Marvin Jones, as of recently, DeAndre Swift and on Johnson. You know, uh, he had Reggie Bush at one point. He's had, so he's had some – decent players and potentially star players, but they've had issues. Calvin Johnson retired early. Uh, Kenny Galladay can't seem to stay healthy. Carry on Johnson had a really solid rookie season and then didn't really perform too well the following year. Marvin Jones has been kind of up and down since getting to Detroit. I mean, given the quality uh, or lack thereof, you could make an argument, I think either way of players that he's had in his entire career, I think he's he's performed as well as he could have. And in my opinion, Cody, I think there's a difference between a guy, you know, don't kill me in the comments section, Colts fans, but there's a difference between an Andrew Luck, a generational talent that's going to work everywhere you go, and a Matt Stafford who is talented and has the capability of being an elite franchise quarterback if he were to have the necessary pieces uh, around him to help him out. So, yeah. but like I said, with Stafford, given the, pieces that he's had over his was 10 11 12 year career 
he has played fairly, fairly well. And I would also challenge people to uh, think of this. He's playing in the NFC North. You're playing the Minnesota Vikings, the Green Bay Packers, and the Chicago Bears, who for the better part of the last 10 years have had either really, really solid defenses, really, really solid offenses, or uh, both. And it's it's not exactly an easy division to play, and it's certainly no cakewalk. And so, like I said, Stafford is a really, really quality quarterback, and with the requisite pieces around him, I think he can maybe take that next step. Yeah, I mean, not every quarterback can do what Andrew Luck did. I don't think – I think as Colts fans, we've been so spoiled with such incredible quarterback play, like quarterbacks that were generational type of guys, right, that can just completely change the franchise no matter what you put around them, Andrew Luck being the obvious example there. But I think you're right. Like, if you get Matthew Stafford surrounded with some really quality talent, which is why I think potentially could be a really good fit, and I'll kind of plug the video that I had on why I think potentially Matthew Stafford to the Colts could make a lot of sense. They'd be really good fits for each other. So if you guys haven't checked out that video, be sure to go do that. But, yeah, I think overall it's been a solid career for Matthew Stafford, given what he's had around him or lack of, like you said. So, okay, we're going to go into some questions now. We kind of have addressed them, so if we kind of double dip it and talk about it again, apologies there. The first question that we'll ask about this is, will this person, this potential free agent slash trade piece, improve the Indianapolis Colts roster in the 2021 season? Give me your thoughts. I I think this is fairly easy for both of us. I'm going as far, and and I know that some of my colleagues at Stampede Blue and some of the other people that I've talked to um, have said Matt Stafford and the Colts makes them a legit Super Bowl contender. I mean, and that's just not, there are a lot of people that think that, not just within, you know, the Colts uh, media group, if you will, but, but outside of that circle as well, around the NFL, you look at the receivers, you look at the offensive line, you look at the defense, you look at the running game with Jonathan Taylor and potentially Marlon Mack. I mean, everything seems to be in place for a guy like Matt Stafford, who has just been missing those kinds of pieces, uh, particularly the offensive line and the defense as well. That's probably something I should have mentioned earlier. The Lions defense hasn't exactly been great since he's been there. And so you put a guy like Matt Stafford, who has one of the biggest arms in the NFL, I think is one of the more accurate quarterbacks uh, in the game as well. And you, you combine that with where the Colts roster is at currently, I think it's a potential recipe for uh, success for at least the next five to seven years. Yeah, I mean, the Colts made a move last offseason to go get a quarterback to win now. And so that's why I think the big reason, we talked about his stats, how if we feel like he's with the right team, we think Indianapolis could potentially be that. Also, Indianapolis is ready to win now. I mean, they've made it as clear. And Jim Merce has even talked about it in his press conference that he had with some of the local indie media, you know, basically saying like, hey, we're ready to win now. We want to potentially go get a veteran guy to go give us that chance at a Super Bowl. And, and I think I agree with that, honestly. I mean, this team, you still have some of those star players, if you will, on you know those rookie contracts. So I think you have a Super Bowl window potentially here to go and get a veteran quarterback. And then when you do have to pay potentially some of those guys, maybe that's when you go address you know your future at quarterback in the draft, wherever that is, whatever that looks like. Okay, so we answered the first question. Undoubtedly, Matt Stafford will improve this Colts roster in the 2021 season if the Colts were to trade for him and acquire the quarterback. And I also kind of answered the second question I had, do they fit where the Colts are looking for? I think we can say yes on that one too, right? Because like I just mentioned, the Colts are ready to win now. Matthew Stafford's in his early 30s here, so he's probably closer to the end of his career than the beginning of his career. I think that's fair to say. Both of these these two scenarios, these two pieces want to win now. And so if, if the Colts can acquire him, I think, yeah, he does fit into exactly what they want to do. All right, next question here will be how much do they cost? Right? How much will acquiring a Matthew Stafford cost? Andrew, do you, do you have some of the, uh, the contract deal about Matthew Stafford? I know it was put out there on Twitter a lot. Um, I was curious if you kind of had the number in your mind of what the Colts would potentially be paying Matthew Stafford if they did acquire him uh, via trade. Well, according to Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport, the Lions are at least looking for a first round pick. I think that's been around for at least a week now or however many days since Matt Stafford has come out and said, you know, publicly, you know, I want to be traded. As far as the price is concerned, the Lions are asking for at least a first round pick. Now, as far as the price that the Colts are willing to pay, let me say this, knowing what we know about Chris Bauer, knowing that each player has a set value, regardless of whether you're trading for that player or you're signing that player free agency or even drafting that player, there is a set value, whether it's financially, whether they're, whether that's character-wise, whether it's leadership. And 
in this case with Matt Stafford, you're talking draft capital uh, mm -hmm. and financial value. And so when you look at a guy like Matt Stafford and you look at the amount of talent he has, as we've already mentioned, I think the Colts would be willing to give up a first round pick this year and a second round pick next year uh, for Matt Stafford. Now with the new surrounding Deshaun Watson, don't want to get too off topic, mm -hmm. that might decrease his market a little bit because Deshaun Watson is obviously much younger and he is in, in many, many regards better than Stafford. That being said, there are still plenty of suitors for Matt Stafford. And if I'm the Colts, I want to get this done. If you if you really want Matt Stafford, I think it's best to get it done as soon as possible because what they don't want to do, in my opinion, is get into a position where you where February and March rolls around and you have, you know, you go from potentially, let's say there are two or three teams now that are really interested in Stafford. And then March hits and that free agency period begins. And now you have 10 to 12 teams that are interested. And let's say Deshaun Watson's off the market. Now you potentially have to give up more capital. So mm -hmm. I, in my opinion, if they really want to go after Matt Stafford, I would go to the Detroit Lions and go to the new GM and the new regime and offer a first round pick in a second round pick. I, I can't see the Colts offering any more than that. If it gets to a certain point where the Lions are, you know, okay, well, now we want two first round picks. Like I said, Chris Ballard has a set value for players, and I just don't see him paying two first round picks, even for a guy as talented as Matthew Stafford. Yeah, I actually was referring to the contract that he would have, but that's a good point too. I didn't think about potentially what it would cost in terms of draft capital. Do you have an idea what his contract would be potentially if the Colts were to acquire him? from the things that I've seen and don't quote me on this, I'd have to go back and look, but if I remember correctly, so I'll put it to you this way, this past season, the Colts were paying Jacoby Brissett and Phillip Rivers. I think it combined $45 million. And now with Rivers being gone and Brissett likely being gone, if they were to trade for Matt Stafford, he would just cost $20 million per year, which given wow. that they were paying nearly double that last season for two quarterbacks, not just one, that seems like a fairly, a fairly good price. Oh, I, I definitely agree. Yeah, I, I posted something. I couldn't remember the exact, exact numbers, but I posted something earlier last week about it'd be about half. So I think you're right on there. It'd be about half of what the Colts were paying their quarterbacks this past season. So I definitely think that could potentially be a really good deal for the Colts. I had a couple thoughts there on some trades, right? So obviously Deshaun Watson wants out of Houston. And I kind of think from like Detroit standpoint, you know, it's been kind of reported that Indianapolis is probably the preferred destination to Matthew Stafford. Again, some of this stuff is kind of smoke. So you don't, you don't really know what you can actually trust at this point in the off season. But, you know, I kind of look at it like this. Why would Detroit, you know, San Francisco has been a team that's been rumored to be potentially like a Matthew Stafford suitor, right? I'm kind of like, why would Detroit trade their star quarterback into the same conference? That's my question, right? And, it's, and especially if a Deshaun Watson's available, who most likely I would think the Texans would try to ship him, ship him off to the NFC. So I think you're right. I think, I think it makes more sense for potentially the Colts. I know the Broncos have potentially been rumored there, but I kind of look at like this, Andrew, like what have the Broncos done in the last couple seasons, right? It's been all pretty much hype at this point. I know they've dealt with their share of injuries. I don't want to discredit that, but like the Colts were just a couple plays away from moving on to the divisional round. Like, and really all they're missing is the quarterback position. You know, obviously left tackles one, but you know, they have a great stable organization. They have a great offensive line. They have all this stuff. I feel like a lot less concerns than say a Denver or another team like that. Right. And, and so I guess that's my, kind of my thoughts on it makes the most sense. And if I was Matthew Stafford, I think that it would make most sense to potentially go to Indianapolis because you have that stability. You have that great core around you and you still have, you know, obviously a draft, you have one of the best talent evaluators in the league in Chris Ballard, who will more than likely get you a left tackle, whether that be free agency or the draft or whatever they do. I don't know. I just, I just kind of was thinking about that and just like Indianapolis just makes so much sense for all those reasons. I was curious your thoughts on potentially that and my thoughts, maybe a little bit crazy. I don't know. I kind of think about some wild things sometimes, some wild scenarios. So sometimes I need to be kind of reined in on some of my ideas, but uh, I was curious your thoughts on that. Well, no, to me, it makes perfect sense what you said, especially with San Francisco being that Stafford has obviously played in the NFC for the last 10 to 12 years. I mean, it would make sense that maybe he wants to go out of conference and come to the AFC. And the other thing too, that I think is important to remember is Stafford wants to go to a place where he can win now. Yes. Indianapolis. 
San Francisco are the two places that come to mind that we've mentioned that make the most sense. Obviously, we're advocating for the Colts here. However, I think it is important to to maintain perspective a little bit in that even though Stafford has come out and said that he preferred to come to Indianapolis, the 49ers, uh, in my opinion, are also a really good team. Um, you know, the, oh, yeah. well-built offensive line, really good defense. They were just in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago and, and had some really bad injury luck this past season. But your point of him wanting, like I said, to come out of conference, t- similar to Deshaun Watson, you know, maybe trading him to the NFC and not into the AFC, it, you know, if that conversation were to come up. Same thing goes with Matt Stafford. That, that to me makes a lot of sense. And it'll be interesting to see how it plays out for sure. Oh, for sure. And again, like this is all speculation. This is probably a little bit early. Honestly, I don't know when this, I know Detroit's like been listening to offers. I just have no idea when a deal would go down. Like it's just right now, it's kind of just sitting and waiting. And, you know, there's all speculation, all smoke screens at this point. One day or one hour it's Indianapolis, one hour at San Francisco. It's just so crazy sometimes the rumors that come out about Matthew Stafford. And that's just kind of how it is in the off season, right? This is kind of what happens. People trying to get for clicks and all that kind of stuff. And so what makes it fun. It makes it fun. It really does. Yeah. And that's why we make all these videos because not, not necessarily for clicks, but it's fun to talk about potential and thinking about, man, if Matthew Stafford was to come to Indianapolis, like you said, Super Bowl contender. So just imagining that, but also having to be like cautious, right? Because sometimes as fans, we could fall in love with a player before he's even on our team repping our, our logo. So yeah, that's, that's definitely something I, I, I'm trying to rein in especially in me because I I get super hyped about it and I try to like hype it up. Then I'm like, look, it may not happen and it may just be completely like speculation and it may turn into nothing. So always trying to to make sure I'm keeping a level head there. I know you want to do the same there, Andrew. So, all right, well, that'll wrap it up for our look at potentially the Colts acquiring Matthew Stafford answered all our different questions on him. I mean, we, we would fully be on board. I mean, we, I think that's fair to say we'd fully be on board Again, it comes down to cost for me in terms of draft capital. I think they could do it, but there's going to be a lot of teams bidding. So if the Colts want to strike, I think they got to do it here pretty soon. All right, that'll wrap it up for this one, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you, Andrew, for coming on, man. Always a pleasure. And uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in. If you haven't checked out some of our other off-season videos, be sure to check those out. There's a lot of good content there. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Thanks so much. And as always, go Colts. (laughs) 